it's really about living a Eucharistic faith in your life every day. A con look, look, this young lady that just asked a question here, the very beautiful question, she's not Catholic. But we share the, our, our, our faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gives the same mission to all his followers to go and make disciples. So we have to, for us as Catholics, though, we, we believe the Eucharist then impels us and strengthens the grace that we received in baptism and confirmation. So the Eucharist impels us to go forward and be Eucharist to the world. So we have to consciously live that every day. And when we start living a Eucharistic faith in the world, then that prepares us to, to, uh, for moments of encounter with other people. All right? So I'll give you an example. There was a, 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 when I was first uh, moved to my state of Oregon, I was working as a security manager director for a, a very large school district. And I was in charge of all the police officers and the security for all, like over 100 schools. And I was walking uh, this woman to her car who was baptized, but then nothing else. No, it was just like a ritual baptism. Her parents did it, but there was like no follow through, no communion, no confirmation, no ma nothing. But we're, I'm being a gentleman. It was winter time. It was dark. I was walking her to her car. We passed my car. And there's a rosary bead hanging because I worked an hour from... Portland. So I would say the rosary either on the way to work or on the way home. And she saw the rosary hanging there. She goes, that's a rosary? I'm like, yeah. She goes, that's the thing with all the Hail Marys on it? Yeah, you want to see how it works? <laughs> so I pulled it and showed it. And then she said this, why do you do that? The question, well, why do you go to church? Why, why do you do that? So what should my answer be? Well, let me tell you about the history of the rosary. <laughs> let me tell you about the Battle of Lepanto and what the... No, she asked, why do I do it? It's a personal question. I said, you know, all I'm doing is I'm praying and reflecting on the mysteries of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I said, the rosary is basic, it's scripture. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. That's the words of... The, uh, the angel Gabriel to Mary. <coughs> Blessed art thou among, bless the fruity room. That's the words of Elizabeth to Mary. That's from the Gospels. That's scripture. So we're praying scripture, reflecting on the beautiful mysteries. So I took, for example, the joyful mysteries. The first joyful mystery, the Annunciation. You're going to be the mother of God. And I said, after we go to Mass, we receive the Eucharist. We're pregnant like Mary was. For as long as until the to 20 or 30 minutes, the Eucharist breaks down and digest. But we're pregnant with Mary. So, and what's, what was Mary's first impulse? To go out to visit her Elizabeth, to bring Jesus out. What do we do after Mass? We get kicked out. We can't stay. Now we have to go out and bring Jesus out in the Eucharist to the world. And I went through each of the mysteries of the joy and explained how each one was connected to everyday lived experience. She was like, whoa. See? That's what we have to do. We have to, have, we have to be able to give reasons to believe. <laughs> Telling a teenager, okay, come to church. Why do I have to go to church? When you're little, they don't argue. Why do I got to go to church? Because uh, I say so. That doesn't work anymore. They need to know why they're there. And when we give them the reasons, then they're on fire. Because now I see what any of that religious stuff is connected to my everyday lived experience. Now I get it. Now I can be passionate. Now I'm on fire because now I know and explain to others what draws me deeply into intimate life with God and my faith. Mm -hmm.